The tale unfolds in a serene neighborhood where Andra, a black man, strolls in solitude. The tranquility is shattered as a suspicious white car rolls up, unsettling Andra. With a quick impulse, he attempts to veer off, only to realize the car's door ominously ajar. In a heart-stopping moment, the driver leaps out, rendering Andra unconscious with swift precision, and he's abruptly hauled into the vehicle. We meet Chris Washington, our black protagonist and talented photographer meticulously packing his equipment. The room buzzes with anticipation as his white girlfriend, Rose Armitage, breezes in ready to escort him to a pivotal meeting with her parents. With a mix of excitement and trepidation, Chris probes if her parents know he's black, his voice tinged with concern over potential racial prejudices. Rose, with a reassuring smile, dispels his fears, affirming her parents' open-mindedness. As they journey to her parents' abode, the mood in the car is a blend of nervous chatter and playful banter. In a moment of lightheartedness, Rose insists on greeting Rod, Chris's best friend and the temporary guardian of his dog, over the speakerphone. Amidst their friendly exchange, Chris's hint of jealousy is as subtle as a deer in headlights. Oh wait, suddenly their laughter is cut short by a startling crash, a deer appearing out of nowhere collides with their car, leaving them shaken and the vehicle damaged. Upon discovering the grievously injured deer at the woods' edge, they decide to involve the authorities. However, the police encounter takes an unexpected turn when the officer inexplicably demands to see Chris's ID, despite him not being the driver. Rose fiercely challenges this racially charged request, a glimpse into the complexities they're about to face. Finally, they arrive at the Armitage residence, a home that radiates affluence and sophistication. Rose's father, Dean, a renowned neurosurgeon, and her mother, Missy, a psychiatrist, welcome them. However, Chris's unease grows as he notices the Armitage's black groundskeeper and housekeeper, an unsettling observation amidst the otherwise welcoming environment. As Chris delves deeper into the world of the Armitages, he discovers layers of complexity beneath their polished veneer. Dean, sensing Chris's discomfort at the sight of the black housekeeper and groundskeeper, swiftly offers an explanation. These employees, he explains, were originally hired to care for his elderly parents, and after their passing, he couldn't bear to let them go. A noble gesture, or so it seems. The family convenes on the porch, a picture of upper-class tranquility, and casually drops the news of an impending house party. Amidst the casual chatter, a more poignant topic surfaces. The loss of Chris's mother in his youth, a wound that seems to never fully heal. In an almost seamless shift, the conversation takes a turn towards Chris's smoking habit. Dean, in a move that feels more like an intervention than a suggestion, proposes Missy's hypnosis therapy as a cure. Because nothing screams normal family gathering like offering to hypnotize your daughter's boyfriend, right? During this exchange, Georgina, the housekeeper, enters with tea, her demeanor betraying in deep emotional turmoil. Missy's abrupt dismissal of her raises more questions than answers. Just as Chris begins to process this odd interaction, the dinner dynamic shifts with the arrival of Jeremy, Rose's younger brother, fresh from medical school. The dinner conversation takes a nosedive into discomfort as Jeremy, slightly inebriated, reminisces about Rose's embarrassing high school antics, with Georgina lingering awkwardly in the background. Tensions escalate when Jeremy probes Chris about his physical capabilities, his words laced with unsettling implications about racial genetics. The dinner teeters on the brink of outright confrontation as Jeremy gears up to challenge Chris, but a timely intervention by the parents defuses the situation, for now. In the sanctuary of Rose's room, she vents her frustration at her family's bizarre and racially insensitive behavior, apologizing to Chris for their actions, which have veered alarmingly off script from the usual meet the parents scenario. As night blankets the Armitage estate, Chris, plagued by restlessness, steps outside seeking solace in the cool night air. The quiet of the night is suddenly pierced by the eerie sight of Walter, the groundskeeper, charging towards him in a full sprint, only to veer off at the last moment, leaving Chris unnerved and bewildered. Retreating to the house, Chris's gaze catches Georgina, the housekeeper, staring blankly out of a window. Her presence is enigmatic as her expression. These unsettling encounters accumulate, leaving Chris with more questions than answers. Upon re-entering, Chris stumbles upon Missy alone in the therapy room. Seizing the opportunity, she delves into a conversation about Chris's smoking habit, her tone suggesting more than just casual concern. As she stirs her tea, the rhythmic scraping against the cup echoes ominously through the room. If only quitting smoking was always this dramatic. Missy's probing questions tear towards the tragic time of Chris's mother's death, a topic that exposes his deepest vulnerabilities. The hypnotic scrape of the spoon bowls Chris into a vulnerable state. Tears betray his struggle as he succumbs to the hypnotic rhythm, finding himself paralyzed, unable to move. In a haunting utterance, Missy speaks the word sink, plunging Chris into a terrifying psychological abyss, a realm she chillingly refers to as the sunken place. It's a realm where Chris's consciousness is detached, 
leaving him helplessly trapped within his own mind. The morning sun brings little comfort to Chris, who awakens in Rose's bed, dismissing the nightmarish events as mere figments of his imagination. However, the reality of his drained phone battery suggests otherwise. He decides to venture out, hoping to clear his mind and perhaps capture the estate's beauty through his camera lens. In a bid for normalcy, Chris engages Walter in conversation, seeking some semblance of connection in this increasingly bizarre environment. Chris, now more alert to the undercurrents of the Armitage estate, finds himself in a peculiar conversation with Walter. The groundskeeper's demeanor is off-kilter, his accent anachronistic, reminiscent of a bygone era. His knowledge of Chris's smoking habit and the previous night's hypnosis session confirms the unsettling reality of Chris's experience, because who needs privacy when you can have your entire life dissected over breakfast? Informed of the hypnosis, Rose responds with an apology for her mother's overstep, but surprisingly, Chris finds himself free from the urge to smoke, a small yet bizarre victory amid the strangeness. The day evolves into a spectacle as guests, predominantly wealthy and white, arrive for the Armitage annual gathering. The interactions that unfold are a parade of awkwardness and racial insensitivity. One guest muses on Chris's golf potential due to Tiger Woods, while another inquires rather crudely about his sexual prowess. Comments about the fashionability of black skin leave Chris feeling like an exhibit rather than a guest. The surrealism peaks as Chris encounters Logan King, another black guest who, like Walter, exudes the air of an old white man. Logan's conversation, peppered with outmoded phrases and a disconcerting demeanor, deepens the mystery. His much older white wife only adds to the bizarre tableau, the fist bump that never lands. Logan's unfamiliarity with this simple gesture is a stark reminder of the chasm between appearances and reality. Under the day's oddities, Chris meets Jim Hudson, a blind art curator. Jim's admiration for Chris's photographic talent offers a brief respite, his blindness seemingly shielding him from the racial biases infecting the others. The strangeness of the Armitage estate escalates as Chris retreats upstairs, only to find the party below abruptly silence, their collective gaze tracking his every move. It's as if he's the main character in a play he'd never auditioned for. Returning to Rose's room, he's baffled to find his phone charger unplugged, a minor yet unsettling detail in a day full of oddities. His suspicion grows as he encounters Georgina, who he suspects of meddling with his phone. Rose, however, rushes off his concerns, attributing it to a harmless mistake. But when Chris reconnects with Rod over the phone, the pieces of this bizarre puzzle begin to fall alarmingly into place. Rod's theories, though outlandish, echo Chris's growing apprehension about the Armitage's true intentions. In an uncanny twist, Georgina's interruption of their call is as timely as a commercial break in a soap opera, only with more unsettling undertones. She parrots an old-fashioned manner of speaking, her words not aligning with her persona, a discordance that unsettles Chris. His attempt to connect with her over the discomfort of being surrounded by a predominantly white crowd results in Georgina's emotional breakdown, a moment as confusing as it is revealing. Descending to the party, Chris is roped into a conversation with Dean and a group of elderly guests, one of whom bluntly inquires whether being African American is an advantage or disadvantage in contemporary society. The question, though jarring, pales in comparison to what follows. Chris enlists Logan to help him answer, attempting to discreetly photograph him for Rod, but the flash of the camera triggers something primal in Logan, resulting in a nosebleed and a harrowing plea for Chris to leave, a warning that cuts through the facade of civility. Uh, yo, chill, man. Chill, 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 man. The family hastily attributes Logan's outburst to epilepsy, a convenient cover for what Chris now suspects to be something far more sinister. As the evening takes a darker turn, Rose convinces Chris to step away for a walk, leaving the guests to initiate a chilling auction. Unbeknownst to Chris, he is the prize, and the blind art curator, Jim Hudson, emerges as the highest bidder in this macabre sale. In the secluded calm of the woods, Chris and Rose share a moment of vulnerability. Chris, grappling with the disorienting aftermath of hypnosis, confesses to experiencing unsettling sensations. He reveals a shocking realization. Logan, one of the guests, is actually Andrew Hayworth, a missing acquaintance of his friend Rod. The revelation sends a shiver down Chris's spine, the pieces of a sinister puzzle beginning to fall into place. Expressing a desperate need to leave, Chris finds agreement from Rose, who suggests they depart in the morning. But as they return through the enveloping darkness, a sense of foreboding grows. The house, now devoid of guests, feels more like a stage set for a play with an unknown script. In the privacy of Rose's room, Chris urgently sends the picture of Logan to Rod. Rod's reaction is explosive, his shock echoing Chris's own fears. However, as fate would have it, Chris's phone chooses the worst possible moment to die because why wouldn't technology fail at a horror movie's climax? 
Alone, Chris's curiosity leads him to an open closet where he uncovers a chilling gallery of rows with numerous black men, including Walter and Georgina. The truth dawns on him. He's not the first, more likely the last, in a disturbing pattern. Rose's return, feigning readiness to leave but unable to find her keys, only heightens Chris's sense of dread. Downstairs, a confrontational tableau awaits, Jeremy blocking the door, Misty and Dean exuding a menacing air in the foyer. The house is transformed into a labyrinth of tension and hidden intentions. In the increasingly tense atmosphere of the Armitage home, Chris, his nerves frayed, demands the car keys from Rose. The once warm and inviting space now feels like a trap, the air thick with unspoken threats. Dean, in a chilling display of arrogance, begins to pontificate on the superiority of the white mind, desperately in need of a more suitable vessel. The conversation, laced with racial undertones, sends a clear message of danger to Chris. Amidst the escalating tension, Jeremy, with a disturbingly casual demeanor, toys with a lacrosse stick, adding a physical threat to the already charged environment. It's like a bizarre family reunion. If your family reunion included sinister monologues and casual lacrosse stick swinging, in a moment of gut-wrenching betrayal, Rose admits her involvement in her family's macabre plans. Chris, his world appendant, lunges at Jeremy in a desperate bid for freedom, only to be thwarted by Missy's hypnotic control. The sound of her tapping teacup reverberates through the room, sending Chris spiraling helplessly back into a state of paralysis. Meanwhile, in the city, Rod, ever the loyal and concerned friend, grows increasingly alarmed by Chris's silence. His intuition drives him to conduct a Google search on Andra, unearthing a missing person's report that chillingly connects back to Chris. In a horrifying revelation, Rod realizes the extent of the danger his friend is in. As Rod's discoveries mount, the narrative returns to the Armitage house where Chris, now helpless and entrapped, is dragged to the basement. The haunting echo of the tea stirring in the cup, a sinister lullaby, renders him unconscious once again. The nightmarish reality of his situation becomes clear as he loses consciousness, the grip of the Armitage is tightening around him. The following day brings no respite for Chris or Rod. In the city, Rod, driven by a mix of concern and determination, approaches the police with his theory. He paints a picture of Chris being ensnared by a white family involved in a sinister plot of kidnapping black individuals. Despite the gravity of his accusations, the police dismiss his claims as outlandish. Undeterred, Rod's resolve only strengthens, a testament to the unshakable bond of friendship. Meanwhile, Rose, playing the role of the concerned girlfriend, answers a call from Rod on Chris's phone. She spins a tale of Chris leaving abruptly two days prior, her voice dripping with deceit. Rod, perceptive and not easily fooled, sees through her curate. His attempt to record the conversation, however, is foiled as Rose cunningly manipulates the narrative, insinuating a romantic interest from Rod, forcing him to end the call in frustration. Back at the Armitage residence, the basement becomes the stage for a horrifying revelation. Chris awakens to find himself face to face with Jim Hudson on a TV screen. Jim, with unsettling calmness, explains a grotesque surgical procedure, transplanting his brain into Chris's body. This revelation unveils the Armitage's twisted pursuit of immortality, transferring consciousness of old white people into young black bodies. Jim's desire for Chris's body, especially his eyes, underscores the horrific commodification of his physical attributes. As if the situation wasn't already a contender for the worst day ever, Chris's helplessness is compounded by another round of tea-induced hypnosis. In a desperate fight for survival, Chris uses his wit to block the hypnosis trigger by stuffing his ears with cotton. This act of defiance sets the stage for a dramatic confrontation. Unleashing a fury born of desperation, Chris overpowers Jeremy, using a lacrosse ball in a brutal turn of events. The chaos intensifies as Dean, attempting to carry out the brain transplant, accidentally sets the operating room ablaze, jeopardizing the anesthetized Jim Hudson. The chaos spills upstairs where Chris faces Missy. In a harrowing struggle, he manages to subdue her, his actions driven by primal need to survive. But the path to freedom is not clear yet. A bloody Jeremy re-emerges intent on stopping Chris. In a decisive move, Chris incapacitates him, ensuring no further pursuit. As Chris makes his escape, Rose, oblivious to the carnage below, remains ensconced in her own twisted world. She is jolted into reality only when Chris, in a desperate bid to flee, accidentally hits Georgina with the car. In a moment of humanity, Chris attempts to save her, but the collision reveals another layer of the Armitage family's dark secret. Georgina is not who she seems. The final confrontation sees Rose arming herself and pursuing Chris. The confrontation culminates in a violent clash, ending with Walter, the groundskeeper, turning the gun on himself and Rose. In these final moments, Chris, filled with contempt yet restrained by his own humanity, cannot bring himself to end Rose's life. 
Just as the situation reaches its peak, a police car arrives. In a twist of fate, it's Rod to the rescue, providing Chris with escape from the nightmare. They drive away, leaving Rose to face the consequences of her family's actions. The movie reaches its climax as they leave the horror behind, marking a harrowing end to their ordeal. If you enjoyed this video, check out another video popping up on your screen now.